Hi, I'm Bob Kovacs, and in this video, I want to talk about how you can use Video Studio to do dissolves from a video on the main timeline to a video that's in one of the overlay tracks. Now, I've set up with multiple cameras here, and I'm going to go uh, do dissolves from camera to camera. This is, I'm calling it a dissolve, but Video Studio calls it a crossfade. And at the same time, I've got a camera going in the back of the room, so I can do dissolves among all three of these cameras, from this camera to this camera to that camera and you can see what it looks like once the program is all rendered. Now, how am I doing these dissolves from the main program channel, the main video track, to the overlay tracks? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. First, I'd like to explain to you a little bit of how I have Corel Video Studio set up. You may want to do the same thing or you may not want to do the same thing depending on how you work. But let me explain a little bit how I work. First thing I did was I go up to the settings menu in the upper left hand corner here and I click on Preferences, and then I click on the Edit tab. Now under the Edit tab, you'll notice that I've checked the box that says Use Fit to Screen as the default size in the overlay track. I do that because I pretty much, almost always, when I use a video, I want it to fill the screen. If you don't have that checked, then the video will come in at some reduced size, and you'll need to actually later fit it to the screen if, if that's what you want to do. Most of the time, probably 99.8% of the time, I want the video to fill the screen. So by having that checkbox uh, checked, that will fit the screen automatically with the overlay track video, and that'll save me a couple of mouse clicks. And the next thing that I do is I come down here to the transition effect. Now the transition effect, it uh, is normally selected out of the box. Corel Video Studio is normally selected to do a random effect. I don't want a random effect. I tend to use a crossfade effect. That's what I use probably 75% of the time. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-select this as crossfade. So in other words, whenever I do an effect, the default effect that's going to put on the timeline is a crossfade. And again, that works very well for me, for my style, because I generally do a lot of crossfades when I'm doing editing. So I automatically, now my overlay video is going to be fitted to the screen, and anytime I do an effect, it's going to be a crossfade. Now, of course, if I want a different effect, this will automatically come up with crossfade. All I need to do is go to the effects library and drag down the effect that I want and plop it into where it has a crossfade and it'll change to whatever the new effect is. So you can always go to a different effect if you want to. What I found myself doing, because this was selecting a random effect, I was always dragging down a crossfade. Well, that's dumb. Why not just select it to be a crossfade? And then I can drag down some other effect if that's in fact what I want to do. So with these two things selected, let's go in and start doing, uh, demonstrating how I did the video. Now that you're all set up and we're ready to start editing, the first thing that I recommend doing is splitting the audio from the main track. The reason I do this is because I have found that with this technique I make a lot of cuts in the main video track. Uh, I don't change uh, anything except for just cutting it, and I'll be demonstrating that in just a moment. And I found that sometimes if I do not split the audio, I found that sometimes I get pops and clicks when the, in the audio when the audio moves past the point where I've cut the video in the main timeline, the main video track. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the audio out so that I will never be splitting my audio. I will be splitting the video in the main track, but I won't be splitting the audio. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a right mouse click. I'm going to highlight the main video track, do a right mouse click, and go to split audio. Now it's split my audio from the main video track to the audio track. Now whatever I do to the main video track, there won't be any clicks in the audio because it has no audio. The audio is all split off. Next thing I want to do is go to my first overlay track, make sure the cursor is all the way over to the left by coming over here and clicking on that. That makes sure it's all the way over on the left. Then I highlight my main track, do a right mouse click, go to split clip. I've now split my main clip right at the beginning of this overlay clip. I'll move the cursor over a little bit. Let's say to there. Click on this part of the main video clip. Do a right mouse click again. Come up to split clip. Now I've got this little bitty clip in here. I've not 
changed the length. I've not shortened or edited my main clip in any way other than just slicing it in a couple of different locations. Now I'm going to click on that little wedge. I'm going to do a right mouse click again. I'm going to go all the way up to copy. I'm going to copy it, come down to my first overlay track, and now I've got a copy of that video here on my overlay track. Now remember, I've automatically set this up so that whenever I do a transition effect, it will do a crossfade. So now when I take this little bit of video and I overlap it with this video, it's automatically going to do a crossfade. And what is it crossfading from? It's crossfading from the video on my main track to the video on my overlay track. All I need to do now is drag this in and it'll snap right into place. There you go. I've now crossfaded from my main video track to my overlay track. And you can do the exact same thing with the second overlay track. I've got overlay tracks one and two. Now I'm going to move this edge out a little bit so I've got a little bit of playing room. And again the cursor is at the leftmost edge of overlay track number two. I'm going to highlight my overlay track number one, do a right mouse click, split it, move the cursor over a little bit, do another right mouse or left mouse click to highlight overlay track number one. Do a left mouse click, go up to split clip, and now I've got this little clip here. I do a right mouse click, and I'm going to copy it, bring it down here, and now I've got a copy of this little snippet of overlay track one. I've got down here on overlay track two. All I have to do now is move it in, and there I've got a crossfade. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like up here. I'll turn up the sound just a little bit so we can hear it as well. So all the video studio calls it a crossfade, and at the same time I've got a camera going in the back of the room. And there you go. So I can do There's those two, what those two crossfades look like. Of course, I did that on a different day, so I'm wearing a different shirt. That was, I recorded that about a week ago. So how do you get out of this now? I've got two crossfades that are stepping me into higher and higher overlay track numbers. How do I get back? Not too hard. Let's say that here is where I want to take it to get back to my main track. I'm going to go ahead and left mouse click to highlight that, do a right mouse click, and I'm going to split my overlay track number two. Again, I'm going to highlight overlay track number two and just drag it out of the way going to come back over here. Now I'm going to go to the right hand edge of that clip. So I've got the right hand edge. I'm going to go to overlay track number one. I'm going to split it and I'm going to drag it out of the way because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a transition from overlay track number two back to my main video track. And to do that I'm going to go to overlay track two. I'm going to go to the right hand edge of it by clicking up here. Now I'm at the right hand edge. I'm going to go to my uh, main video track, do a right mouse click. I'm going to split it at that point, move it this way, going to highlight it again, do a right mouse click, split it at that point. Now I've got this little slice of video right there. I'm going to copy that, do a right mouse click, go up to copy, put it down here on overlay track two, slide it in, and now I have a crossfade transition. And again, you can use any effect with this. It doesn't have to be a crossfade. I've got a crossfade transition that transitions from overlay track two back to my main video track. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Three of these cameras, from this camera to this camera to that camera, and you can see what it looks like once the program there you go. I've now transitioned it back to my main video track. All you need to do is go through, you, through your video and you can do this from any of your overlay tracks to any of other of your overlay tracks or to the main video track. Now let's say that I didn't want that crossfade transition. I wanted a different transition. Go up to your transition menu up here. Let's say that I wanted to do a slide transition. All I need to do is drag that down to this crossfade and now it is a slide with a green bar in it. And here's what that looks like. These cameras, from this camera to this camera to that camera, and you can see what it looks like once. There you go. 
So uh, it's really very simple to do. Once I figured it out, I had to scratch my head for a little while to figure it out. But that's how you do transitions from your main video track to your overlay tracks and back again. Hey everybody, I'm Bob Kovacs. Thanks for watching.